Hey everyone, welcome to A Day in the Life of a Sports Physical Therapist. My name is Brian Schwabe, board certified sports physical therapist, entrepreneur, and co-founder of The Student Physical Therapist. I've worked with elite athletes for over a decade and currently serve as the director of IO Sports Therapy, working side-by-side -side with high-performance coaches, NFL and NBA skills trainers, and sports agents on a daily basis. I'm also an author, sports medicine consultant, course creator, speaker, and counselor sports physical therapist, traveling with professional athletes and celebrities. The purpose of these short segments are to help you learn about what it's really like to work in a sports physical therapy setting alongside high performance coaches, sports agents, skills trainers, and professional athletes. I'll provide you with actionable tips every single week as I take you through a day in the life of a sports physical therapist. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to another day in the life of a sports physical therapist. In today's episode, we're going to talk about advice for new grads, and specifically we're going to talk about imposter syndrome. Now, imposter syndrome is something that most physical therapists go through at some point in their career and sometimes multiple points in their career. So today, I really want to talk about what imposter syndrome is, a little bit of example from my personal experience with that, and things that you can do to understand that you can get out of imposter syndrome and that imposter syndrome really isn't real. So I'll give you a little example of the imposter syndrome I personally went through. And that started when I was coming out of physical therapy school, entering sports residency program. Now, at that point, I was very motivated to get into sports physical therapy, uh, obviously by going through a sports residency program, but also having really big goals to work in professional sports, to work with professional athletes. And I think a lot of you probably relate to that. And, you know, the, the tough part now versus when I was coming out of school was there wasn't as much social media. There was, but there wasn't too much out there. And if I think back on specifically what I dealt with and specifically who the people were out there, the names that come to mind are Mike Reinold, right? He had a big website. He had a big blog. He was really at the forefront of getting on the online space. He had some publications. He was uh, working for the Red Sox at, at one point. George Davies was another one. Uh, Dan Lorenz. Uh, and just some of my re residency mentors even. And I feel like, you know, those were the people I kind of looked up to, you know, in, in my early career. And I remember looking at them and thinking, wow, you like, they, they have the perfect career. They really know everything, you know, and they're just so much smarter than I am. And I, I don't ever feel like I can get to that level. And I say that because there's so many clinicians out there that feel that way. They feel like they're never going to reach those same heights as the people that they put on that pedestal. And it's just not true. It's just not true. It's, uh, it's something that, you know, we feel early on because, you know, we, we feel like, okay, anything we're doing new that we learned in a CEU course or anything that we've picked up on that we feel like might work, but we're kind of faking it till we make it. That's something that's really real. And it makes us feel like imposters. Right. And especially in sports physical therapy, as you're moving up and working with higher level athletes, I can see how so many clinicians go through that. I remember the first time I worked with a professional athlete, you know, I felt like I had to do all these things with them to impress them and this and that. And it's just not true. Right. The, the, the best physical therapists, the best sports physical therapists were ones that really were smart, but they weren't doing anything crazy. Uh, and I think that being 10 years out now and, and doing that on a daily basis and being in finally in this field of sports physical therapy, where I feel like I feel comfortable sharing these experiences because I have enough experience behind my, my, uh, my career to say that uh, I, I keep things so simple with professional athletes. And, you know, if I look at the Dan Lorenzes, the Mike Reynolds, the George Davies, and some of the other ones that I would, I would look up to early on, they really, you know, they really emulated the KISS principle, which was keep it simple, stupid, or whatever you want to call it, right? There's different different uh, ways to say the KISS principle, but really that's what it is. It's just they kept everything so simple. They really focused on the basics, but more importantly, they focused on the touch and the feel of the joints. It was a post-op ACL knee. Uh, you know, they've done it so many times that that experience really, you know, gave them the confidence more than anything to understand what was going on with that individual. They had enough reps with seeing athletes over and over and over again and surgeries over and over and over again to really understand what was going on. And, and I can personally tell you that's the same thing for me now. You know, I've done this for 10 years, but my experiences within those 10 years 
is massive, right? My experience for 10 years is more like 30 years because of the uh, types of patients I've seen, the amount of athletes I've seen. And I think that's what really matters, right? The experience actually does matter, but it's the right experiences that matter. And that is what will get you out of imposter syndrome is having the right experiences so that you understand what is actually going on with each athlete that you treat, with each patient that you treat, and with each outcome that you get. Because each time that you're working with a new patient, early on, you're going to feel like an imposter at times. It's just part of the business. It's part of being a physical therapist and getting your reps in. But if you're constantly seeking out that mentorship, if you're constantly trying to audit what you're doing, if you're constantly trying to innovate what you're doing, but also reflect on that, and that's the key, reflect on it, then you'll get out of that imposter syndrome because you'll realize everybody that has come before you, the people that you're looking up to, they had to go through those same reps, but they had to get the experience to feel like they actually knew what they were doing. And even then, I promise you, they still don't know everything. They still don't feel like they're they're constantly, you know, with every single patient doing everything they can or knowing everything about that patient. There's still times that they get questions that they don't know. And I know that for a fact because every one of the mentors I've talked to has told me that. Every every one of those physical therapists that were I thought on a pedestal way above me said the same things when I'd ask them. And I bet if you ask your mentors or the people you look up to just openly in a conversation, they tell you the same thing. So remember, imposter syndrome, it's not real, okay? It's something we put inside ourselves, but it's not something that we have to keep in our lives, right? It's something that we can get rid of by just trying to constantly be better at what we do, reach out to people that we respect, and also to realize that the stuff you see on Instagram is just not real half the time, more, more than half the time, actually. You know, there's, there's, too many, there's too many people that have a small, small experience that put, that put it out there that make it seem like that's all they do when they've barely done it. You know, the people that have really done it, they don't have time to put it out there because they're doing it every day. So just remember that as a new grad or an early clinician that's trying to break into sports physical therapy more and trying to work with a certain type of clientele or get better at what you're doing. You will get better over time, but take the time to get better with it. Reach out to those mentors, reach out to the people you respect and understand what they're actually doing. 